Sir. Yes. So finding it, it's, it's a very interesting one. Regarding the Yantra side, uh, normally I said, I want to know how to we look at, visualize, or how to we get it perfected, and that could be a little more elaborated. So honestly, sir, I will say this. I most of my training has been in neuroscience and neurology, so I don't know much about these things. <laughs> I have a little interest, but broad knowledge I have mostly comes from like reading books and all that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think these are very good ways to really grasp the essence of what needs to be done. Like this time when I went to Shingiri, I spoke to some people there who are experts at this. Uh, and like the person there, actually one of the very expert people there, he told me these Sri Yantra things and all, preferably not something you want to do in this age. Like now you do things like other Durga Sapshati or um, you know, Sandhya Vandram, those kind of things. But those things, he says, usually they reserve for like older people. And he says they're very high risk. Like, so I, I, I think the message should also be sent out that these are high reward, high risk practices. And I think they say the high risk comes from the fact that people go crazy, which if you're approaching it from a neurological perspective, makes sense. Because if you change some of this critical wiring, like craziness is like, it's basically like a neurological malfunction, some schizophrenia or whatever, it's all, you know, it is completely believable. Like they don't say that person will get a heart attack. They don't say person will get like their foot will fall off, but they say they will go crazy. So, and I think like it probably is true. Like if you do it in an inappropriate way, you probably could go crazy because if you're doing some weird rewiring, so I don't know how to do all these uh, yantras and stuff. I only know that they exist. I know that different yantras are there for different deities. And I know that even in the Sri Yantra itself, like the angles and the spacing, each of those leads to apparently like a different vibration and a different deity comes out. So they say the Sri Yantra represents all the deities. So, but the, each of them has like some little bit shift this, that line here and there and like it changes the meaning of the, uh, the Sri Yantra. So, yeah, like that's the extent of my knowledge about these uh, practices. I was hoping to learn more, but they said uh, maybe once you're like, you know, after you're done with family life. <laughs> Uh, not exactly a question, but more an observation, I think. What you said is about the uh, role of body also in healing. You know, that's, uh, and a similar movement uh, started in psychiatry and psychology with the works of Wilhelm Reich. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar, if you've heard of him. I don't think I have. But... Uh, he was one of Freud's uh, okay. disciples. Okay. And uh, he saw that... Uh, you know, I mean, he was very annoyed with the way the psychoanalyst did not take into account the body. Okay, okay, you know? exactly. And even, like, for example, uh, he talks about that he, at one point, a patient uh, was talking about death in the family. Okay. And he just wanted to touch him and reassure, but psychoanalysts said, no, don't if you touch. Don't touch, that means sexual. Exactly. So yeah. he broke away from Freud and started the Reichian school. Okay. okay. He, he was, actually, he, his books were burned by FBI. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, he was, I mean, if you, he wrote a very famous book called, Fu you know, there's a book about him called Fury on Earth, and he he was exiled to Norway. Oh. The F I mean, that's the only time when FBI burned, you know, books of somebody. Wow. That was in the 50s. My God. And he went to Norway. Norway allowed him to function. Okay. And then there grew a generation of psychiatrists who picked up his work about body as the core in psychotherapy. Okay. Okay. Because the psychotherapy was divided into the verbal and the non-verbal yes. sphere. Yes. And a lot of people, like, for example, you mentioned schizophrenia and other groups. Yeah. Yeah. They were not uh, focusing upon verbal psychotherapy, not responding to that. Ah, yes. But they were responding to uh, non-verbal psychotherapy okay, and okay. the role of body. Okay. And he talked of uh, seven, uh, you know, rings around the body, just like the way the chakras are. Wow. He talked of armors, you know, which ah, we develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I mean, he was one of the most ostracized psychiatrists in the world. Wow. But today, I mean, he had two disciples uh, who took his work forward. One was John Piracos. Okay. And uh, the other one. Um, forgetting the name, but they took his work forward and today it's a very well established uh, stream within psychiatry okay. which focuses upon the body as a source of healing. Wonderful. That's the a... body feels. Exactly. Huh. You know, and I was uh, very glad to train with one of them. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I use that uh, in my work because I find that it's uh, the body is the first sometimes the one to respond and I found the, ex uh, the experiment that the example that you gave was very fascinating. The body responds first, even before sometimes the exactly. mind responds. You know, you know, the mind responds. So I'd be very interested in knowing about the role of body in healing purposes and uh, how it works. You know. That's a good point. Like I, I agree. I think uh, 
because most of the research is still based on that mindset generated by the western metaphysic people that has not reached a critical mass in terms of like looking at how the body contributes to healing but i think uh, for me personally i think charles darwin is a very revolutionary figure in that mindset because when you look at things from an evolutionary perspective you cannot say the mind is separate from the body because like you look at how the nervous system evolved initially there was no nervous system then organisms small small organisms developed like single nerves to just transmit information and then as the body became more complex they needed something to exert a control over it and to transmit information of what's happening at one end to the other end so the nervous system evolved and became more complicated as the body evolved so it's very intimately associated with the body there is no hard and fast distinction between the nerves and the body uh, so i think it's entirely believable that it, the body should be a very important uh, drama therapy had its origin in acknowledging the body huh. because the originator of drama therapy he was interviewing this person a mother and daughter huh. and uh, you know he was talking something about the daughter who was schizophrenic okay and the daughter uh, you know was silent had not spoken okay and then you know he was talking to the mother and you know the he could notice that the daughter wanted to speak ah. but was not talking ah. so then he turned to the mother and said would you go out and he asked the daughter ah. what your mother is saying is that true ah. and she said no then would you enact it and show it to me and she got up and started acting ah. and then he realized that people enact through their body to tell what they have gone through true and the whole uh, true. you know origin of drama therapy which is so well established right now is in this ah. He was a Hungarian psychiatrist who came uh, to the U.S. in 1945. Okay. Who wrote extensively about body and psychotherapy. Okay. That's wonderful. I'll definitely look into his more. Yeah, I think it'll be very interesting to hear. I don't know if you're familiar with the works of Stan Grof. Yes, I have heard. The, have, yeah, okay. I have read He's some of his stuff. Come to India and lectured several times. Okay. Okay. And the one that you mentioned about that uh, pictures that you bought, uh, the book that you got at the Chennai book yes, store. Yes. Yes. Uh, he does grop breathing, and at the end of it, people draw pictures. Yeah, with colors, which I have been part of. I've been part of grop breathing. You huh. breathe continuously for hours together, huh. and then your consciousness changes. Huh. You behave very differently. I mean, people behave from being acting like reptiles to screaming, shouting, and all that. Huh. Yeah, uh, it's, some, it's something similar to Arthur Jano, who wrote the Primal Scream. Okay, okay, and. Uh, The pictures are. I was noticing are very similar to what he has talked about. Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah so It, you know, just do graph breathing and the pictures. You will see some similar pictures. Okay, that's fascinating. That's yeah. very useful. Uh, I'll definitely check it out. Graph breathing. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.